And let's just start with this the Thank plan you. here. My understanding is you didn't want to jump in with um, an EV vehicle unless it would be profitable. So just position this car inside the overall Volvo universe for us. You expect it to have scale and profitability? Yes, absolutely. Of course, uh, from day one it will be profitable, but of course in the very low volumes you, you have to understand that the cost level will be higher, so it might be a lower profit margin initially. But uh, I think what counts is a bit more mid-term, and then, then we, we, we definitely believe that an EV car will have a higher value for the consumer, and uh, long term it's absolutely the right thing to do. So when you talk about the subsidizing the charging costs, just how did you come to that as a decision to help push this car? It's really not related to the all-electric cars. That is, uh, we will now promote really the sales of the so-called plug-in hybrid, which you could call a part-time electric car. And, and uh, that's, of course, very important that you really charge that and not just fill in gas and drive it as a conventional car. So we follow this very closely in our monitoring of the car. And right now it's around 40 percent of customers buying a plug-in are using it uh, electric 40 percent of the time. And we want really to incentivize customers to really charge it even more. And that's why we say first year electricity is included in the price of the car when you buy a plug-in hybrid recharge car from Volvo. So where will these cars be made? Will they be at all affected by tariffs? Yeah, they are made really in, uh, uh, they are made in, in Charleston, some models, others are made in Torsland. As I would say, there is no really connection to tariffs. Tariffs is really a problem for us, uh, for electric cars, plug-ins or conventionals. I mean, our global production system is based on that some cars we build in one location and, and trade. Uh, high volumes cars we build locally, but I mean, if we would have trade restrictions and we're forced to build all co cars locally, it would co of course be an additional cost for our consumers. So we hope that will not be the case looking forward. So we have seen also the Chinese government now reduce those subsidies for new energy vehicles. Are you at all concerned about EV demand within China? Uh, yes, uh, I mean the, the subsidies has, has gone down and of course it's always helpful with government to support introducing new technology but on the other hand we really believe if electric cars are going to fly long term it has to be sold to customers who are ready to pay for it. It has to be attractive products competitive on the free market otherwise you just have temporary uh, subsidies will not help, will not help the climate. That's why we are so uh, sure about that if we want to do a participate in a better climate we need to do it with attractive products all on the free market and to sherry's point as you do move beyond those subsidies uh, you want obviously to get to volume is china the market for you will there be mass purchases of these kinds of vehicles there I think all, all markets, I mean, here in the west coast of U.S., for example, it's a very big market for electric cars, but also in Europe there is an appetite for, for electric cars. So I think so far the interest in China has been, uh, to a large degree, been based on incentives. So I think, but also the Chinese market will, will pick up and see the beauty of an electric car. But it's also based on that you have some somewhere to charge the car overnight. It's very difficult mm -hmm. if you park the car on a street in a big city. I think those customers will be the last one going electric. We definitely have seen uh, many in this space pull back, um, obviously on the more experimental end, Dyson just very recently, but many auto uh, makers have also sort of experimented with electric and, and really pulled out a little bit, not done so well. What can you do differently that, that guarantees or ensures your success? First, I think you have to realize it's not that easy to start from scratch building an electric car. I mean, you need R&D resources, you need production resources, and, and you, most important, you need service backup on all markets. It's not that easy for a startup starting from scratch. So uh, that is one thing. And, um, 
that is also a big advantage for us uh, being an established car maker. It's uh, easier for us to bring an electric car out on the market than uh, for a new startup.